Hello and welcome to The Fourth Wave, a podcast named after the fourth wave of feminism that aims to inspire, empower, inform, and celebrate the woman of today. Each episode, we will give you strategies and ideas for living a life as your most empowered self. This week, we will talk about the importance of affirmations, how to get out of a toxic relationship, and a self-empowerment booster tip that always leaves us feeling powerful and able to take on the day. I'm Mirtha Michelle, a best-selling author and poet. I am your host and co-founder of The Fourth Wave, and I'm here in Los Angeles alongside my friend and co-founder, Jamie Barada. That's me, Jamie Barada, an entertainment and fashion attorney living in Los Angeles. Okay, so we're really excited for today's topic because it came from our followers on Instagram, a bunch of people writing in about it. So we'll get to that in just a second because, as you know, we like to start off our show by sharing strategies and tips that help us feel a sense of empowerment in our daily lives. Things that work for us and hopefully can work for you too. So we love it when these come from our listeners. So please write to us with what works for you at info at the ivywave.com or you can DM us on Instagram or Twitter at the Ivy Wave. So this week, our try this at home has to do with affirmations. And for those of you that don't know, That's the practice of positive thinking and self-empowerment and speaking it out, right? Speaking it out. And we specifically want you guys to practice starting your day with three affirmations. I really love this idea. I've practiced this idea. I, I still practice it. And I'll tell you, one t- I, at one point, I wasn't feeling too great about myself. My self-esteem wasn't as high as it usually is. And I decided to start my day with affirmations. I think that our words have so much power, and our words can create thoughts mm-hmm. and can create the entire energy that we experience that, that the rest of the day. So I began um, to affirm myself with positive words. For example, I would say, I am strong. I am beautiful. Oh my God, did that sound like a Christina Aguilera song? (laughs) It did, but you guys know what I mean. So I would say things like, I am intelligent, I am successful. I spoke power into myself. Mm -hmm. And sometimes... That's what you have to do. Right. We constantly do it for our friends at times and our family members. You know, when someone isn't feeling that good about themselves, you tell them, oh, no, but you're this, you're this, you're that. So why not do it about, you know, why not do it to ourselves? And I also think that if if it's hard for for any of you to come up with certain affirmations for yourself, there are books you can purchase mm-hmm. that are affirmation books. Mm-hmm. So they they will have um, certain quotes and certain things to repeat for yourself. Yeah, I find those really helpful because I do sometimes get a little bit of um, like a brain freeze when I wake up and try to do this exercise. Like I am, I am what? I don't know. So you can even go online, like a lot of, uh, if you just type in the word affirmation, um, blogs will come up with a bunch of affirmations for you. And some, some blogs actually even have uh, daily newsletters, daily... Yeah, or like, like apps where you get it. Yeah, certain like apps. Reminder. I actually, to be honest, I, I wake, when I, whenever I wake up, I read a certain email from a pastor mm-hmm. that he sends out him and his wife, they send it out every single day and it's called Today's Word with Joel Austin. Mm -hmm. And it's very brief and it's so positive. And some of you guys might have seen how I sometimes screen capture it and post it on my IG story. Mm -hmm. And it's very helpful. And it, they all end with an uh, affirmation. Yeah. I think it's so important. And it, and like, most of these topics that we um, discuss in this section of the podcast, you know, you have to be consistent with it. Consistency is really where you'll start to see it make a an effect, a the positive impact. effect, yeah, an impact on your life. Um, and I, I fall out of this habit all the time. Like, I'll be really good, and 
for a week I'll wake up and I'll, I go straight to my phone to do that. And then, you know, I fall out of it. And then I go the next week I'm going straight to my phone to look at something online. And, you know, this is going to set the tone for your day and how you feel about yourself. Which is so important because you should never forget about yourself. So let us know if you tried this at home. Start your day off by writing down three things, three affirmations, and you can check it off during the day and let us know if it helps you feel a sense of empowerment in your daily lives. Remember, you can get in touch with us on Twitter, on Instagram, or drop us an email at info at the ivywave.com or go to the ivywave.com for contact info links and everything else related to this podcast. Okay, so this week is a really sensitive topic, and like I said earlier, it came from several of our followers uh, writing in and asking us to talk about this topic, which I thought was really interesting because, you know, they were obviously people that probably don't know each other, and everyone kind of um, wanted us to touch on the same thing, and that is how to get out of a toxic relationship. So, what is toxic? Yeah, how do you define toxic? Half of letters to the men I have loved. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because uh, my dad has never has never actually read any of my books from beginning to end. Mm-hmm. And one day he opened um, he opened my iPad, or I handed it to him, and it was open on a certain poem of Letters to the Men I Have Loved, and he read it, and he was like, wow, this was a toxic relationship. Mm -hmm. I was like, yes, daddy, give me that. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we've all been there. Yeah. If you haven't been in a toxic relationship, consider yourself a very lucky human being, Mm -hmm. and pray that you can stay without experiencing a toxic relationship. Although you grow from it, it is not necessarily an experience that I'd wish on anyone. Yeah. And we don't want anyone listening to this to, to, I'm not trying to put, we're not trying to put ideas into people's heads. Like if you have, if one of these things is occurring, you are in a toxic relationship, like alert, alert. But, um, you know, you're, you're the, you're the only person that knows what goes on in your own relationship, but in terms of like signs of being in a toxic relationship, and again, like it wouldn't be one. Pro- most of the time, it's not going to be something occurring in solitude, like by itself. But I would definitely say one of them is on and off, on and off relationships. Very volatile. Yeah. Um, if you find yourself crying more than smiling, I always I I love to say that one because that's when I realized that I was in a toxic relationship. Yeah. When I was crying more than I was happy. For for me, one of the ones I knew was like the lows, kind of kind of going in hand in hand with what you just said. The lows were so low, and the highs of the relationship were so, so high. high. And it, you know, they call it a. It was a drug. Coaster. Yeah, and it's it made the highs not even worth it because you knew it was just going to come. Like, it was just around the corner whenever it was going to come back down to And drop you. Um, I think some people say, like, it's, they feel they're in a toxic relationship when, like, no matter what, you can't seem to do anything right. Like, you just, you're getting picked on, like, for every little mm. thing that you say or do, no matter how much effort you're putting into their relationship. Um, what are some other signs of toxic relationships? I think some other signs of toxic relationships are maybe what your family and your friends are telling you. Right. If they think, if they advise you like of getting out of the relationship, Mm -hmm. that's a sign. I think sometimes people, when they think of toxic, they immediately sometimes think, well, he's not, physically abusing me she's not physically abusing me it's not only that sometimes mental abuse is sometimes even stronger yeah and it has a stronger effect than physical abuse for sure if uh you know because we we talk about everything that we talk about is related to self-empowerment so if if you're in a relationship where it 
is making you feel bad about who you are as a person. It uh, does it make you better in in actuality. It drains you. Yeah, it drains your draining. energy. Uh, where you feel constantly belittled. Um, one trigger sign for me in a relationship was um, like the I, like growth was discouraged. So you know if if I would have like a, a great job opportunity or meet someone that like a new friend who I like, you know, who was probably going to be taking up some of my time now from my relationship. I just was like confronted with, but it was just negative uh, responses to all of the above. Like, well, why would you want that job? Why aren't you just happy doing what you're doing now? Why do you need that job? Why can't you just spend time with me all day? Or why do you need that friend? Like, because usually when you're in a toxic relationship, uh, there's a codependency. Mm Mm-hmm. There's a codependency, and I I actually talk about this in my latest book, In Letters to Women Like Me. Anytime that you find yourself dependent on another human being, it's going to end badly because yeah. it completely stops your growth and your sense of self is becomes completely vague. And... That's like the worst thing for any human being. You always, the happiest you'll ever be is the moment you have a strong sense of self. And when you're codependent on another human being, it's just gonna, it's like a recipe for disaster. You have to be whole on your own first. A hundred percent. So I guess the next question would be like, if you realize you're in a toxic relationship, or then how... Do you get out of a toxic relationship, especially if you're still in love with that person? Well, you know, one thing that I always say is you can love someone, but how much do you love yourself? Mm-hmm. Because what kind, of, what kind of love is that if you love the other person more than you love yourself? Right. And I always say that you, I know it sounds, sounds somewhat selfish, and we're always taught to love other people, and we're never really taught to love ourselves. Mm-hmm. And I think it's so important to prioritize our needs. And you have to be brave. Yeah. Loving yourself takes valor. Yeah. And you have to be brave. If you realize that you're in a toxic relationship and you're able to actually make that decision to get out of it for your own good, then you should do it. Yeah, and because, like Martha said, usually these relationships, there is so much codependency, it, it oftentimes is really hard to get out of a toxic relationship. Um, like, I always... You feel like you need the person yeah. or that they need you. Sometimes it's that. Sometimes you feel bad. Oh, but he needs me. She needs me. Mm-hmm. No, you need yourself right. first. And uh, I I always say to myself, really, (laughs) that, like, one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life and one of the things I'm most proud of was leaving a a toxic relationship that I was in. Like, I literally put it up there right next to, I'll I'll be like, oh, one of the hardest things I've ever had to go through, you know, I, I lost a brother when I was younger and then... I literally equate this toxic relationship and walking away from it as one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Not, not because I didn't know, I questioned whether it was good or not for me. I knew it was what I needed to do, but it's, it's just so hard to do. And that's why, you know, I, we want to give people advice, the ones that wrote in about this. There is no, like, equate, like, you know... Um, sweet fix to it it really is what Martha said like you have to you have to have courage you have to have courage and you have to stick to your guns about it because you know there cannot be leaving and going back you have to be firm in your decision and not waver um and I think everyone though like has a different breaking point as to when they feel like they're ready to walk away no one can it's like that last straw yeah. And your friends can't really tell you when that is because for them they might have a different breaking point than you. But it's like a switch happens. Yeah. I would say though, like 
it, it, it's, it's worth it. It's worth it. And if you can do it right when you see that first flag of it being a toxic relationship, do it then because it's not, uh, it's not, I mean, most of the time it, it's, it's going to stay like that. It's not going to get better. I, you know, um, throughout the years of me knowing different people and dating different people, I'll, I'll tell you, I think that certain people bring out certain things in you. Mm-hmm. It's like, have you noticed, like, for example, some people have a very violent relationship with one person and then a very loving relationship with another person. Yeah. Because everyone brings out a different part of your personality. Brings yeah. Brings out something different. Like one relationship, you'll be paranoid and jealous. And then another relationship, you feel complete trust in someone. And it, it all depends. I think the more relationships you're in, the more Compatibility, you obviously. Yeah. But uh, when you were talking about the red flags, mm-hmm. it's so important to try to spot it in the beginning yeah and you know be fair about it because again I'm, we're not trying to say if one of these things are happen if one of these things happens you're in a toxic relationship I think you have to be your own judge but um but I think it's all it's always about how you feel yeah overall how does that person make you feel right overall are you happier or are you more sad as the relationship goes on? Right. Because, again, obviously, if you're having one argument, you're going to be sad. That doesn't mean it's a toxic relationship. Everybody argues. Everyone, it, but it, everyone works through things. But it's, you know, how those, how, you know, obviously, it's difficult to say how you argue. But it's the relationship as a whole, like Martha said, not these, like, isolated events. Um, so, yeah, for those that want to know how to get out of one. Another thing I would say is like having a support system. Like for example, in high school, my first relationship turned into a really unhealthy relationship. And I, it was easier for me to end that relationship because I would see my friends every day. You know, I had a really strong support system. Um, whereas as an adult, it's harder to have that because we don't see our friends every day, all day. Um, and you, you know, you, you are alone a lot of the time or, um, or if, again, if you're in a codependent relationship, you're, you're used to spending most of your time with that person. So if I think if you form a support system and tell your friends, like, uh, I'm really trying to leave this relationship, um, I'm going to need, like, you know, your support. Again. But your help. Yeah. And don't be afraid to, to reach out for help. Right. Um, there are always people you can go to talk to about it. So, and sometimes that makes it easier because then you're accountable for something. You know, if you keep it inside, then you're not accountable to, to, to anyone towards, uh, except for yourself. But if... Uh, you know, you're, you're telling people about it, um, then it's like you're, you have an outward expectation as well to live up to your word. So, yeah, um, I, if you guys, if any of you guys find yourself in a toxic relationship, know that you don't have to stay in it and reach out for help. And I mean, we're here for you guys. If you ever want to reach out and reach out for any advice, we will gladly be there for you. Yes, and it does not have to be like that. That is not how relationships have to be. That's, like, so important to uh, know. So every episode, we love to leave you guys with a little self-empowerment booster tip that we use in our personal lives. They will be simple and straightforward. Now, this week, my personal booster I want to share is a good blowout. (laughs) (laughs) Guys, I'm Dominican. We give the best blowouts, but I live in Los Angeles, and we lack Dominican hair salons. Mm -hmm. So we lack Dominican anything, actually. Uh, But I discovered, I found this Brazilian salon, 
and this Brazilian dry bar, and they give amazing blowouts, equally as good as Dominicans. So that is my my go-to for me to feel really good about myself sometimes. I sometimes I go and get one before a big meeting mm-hmm. and or sometimes just like for a weekend. If I if I know I'm gonna go on a hot date, I will go and get a blowout. Plus I have a lot of hair, so I'm a little lazy sometimes doing my own hair. Mm-hmm. So that is my personal uh, booster tip for this week. What about you, Jamie? No, you like a good blowout I, too. I love a good blowout. It makes you feel like so confident after. It seems superficial, but it makes you feel so confident after. And I actually went a little bit overboard <laughs> with blowouts. I went like one year. I was like, I'm going to get a blowout every Monday of the week. And I signed up for like one of those subscriptions because uh, some some of these dry bars have subscriptions where you know you'll pay X at, at a month. discounted fee. Yeah, but actually it was not great for great on my hair, <laughs> caused some damage. So, um, but yes, uh, blowouts not all the time in my case, but they uh, they make me. I mean, they make I think they make all women feel just amazing and beautiful and confident. So I think that's a really good one. That's it for this week's episode of The Fourth Wave. Remember to try this at home. Start your day with affirmations. Check them off during the day. Let us know if you tried it and if it worked for you. You can get in touch with us. Martha's on Instagram at Martha Michelle and I am Jamie underscore Barada. Our email address is info at the ivywave.com. Send us your comments and feedback. Until next time, I'm Jamie Barada. And I'm Martha Michelle. Thanks for joining us.